In this video, I will cover the detailed algorithm of 3D Gaussian splatting. Please watch the previous video for the basic concept. Below is an overview picture mentioned in the paper, and I summarized the features. It starts with the SFM points, which is a point cloud. When creating an existing NERF dataset, the core map library was generally used to obtain the camera pose for each image which is one of the structural promotion algorithms. The SFM algorithm takes images as input and generates camera poses with the point cloud. This point cloud becomes the initial mean value of Gaussian and other variables are initialized to random values in the initialization step. The variables that make up 3D Gaussian are position, opacity, covariance, and the spherical harmonics coefficient. And these values are explicitly designed and optimized through ground truth images. 3D Gaussians are projected onto the image plane corresponding to the camera pose and rendered as images through a differentiable tile-based rasterizer. Here, rasterization is possible through CUDA-based parallel operations. The rest of the sequence will be explained later in each part. Since this paper is on familiar structure, I will use the pseudocut to explain it. The red part is the initialization part where position, covariance, color, and opacity are initialized. The blue part located inside the training iteration is the upper part of the overview, and the green part is the lower part. The difference between the rendered image and the ground truth image is backpropagated to the front as a gradient. And in the blue part, all variables that make up the Gaussian are optimized. The green part is performed at each specific iteration. This is the part where the number of Gaussian is removed, split, and cloned. And the logic Gaussian structure is changed. The green part is also updated from the gradient. In the pseudocode, Gaussian is simply initialized. But here, I will cover in detail how to design Gaussian. The Gaussian's mean is initialized from point cloud created with SFM as the central point of the ellipse. S is Gaussian's covariance. General covariance is defined as a symmetric matrix. In general, a symmetric matrix is created by transposing and multiplying the difference between the input value and the average value. Therefore, this paper was designed with a formula that multiplies these transposed values. In the pseudocode, covariance is the symbol S, but in the formula, it's written as sigma and the sigma is composed of R, which is a rotation matrix, and S, which is a scale matrix. R is the vector of how tilt the Gaussian is. R consists of a, a 3 by 3 matrix, but when R converts to quaternion rotation, it can be defined with the four variables. Through the training process, the quaternion value is optimized and it converts to a 3x3 three three rotation matrix for matrix operations. The symbol S in the formula is a vector that determines the size of Gaussian. It consists of three vectors and is cloned to create a 3x3 three three matrix. The basic matrix transformation operation is for explaining how these matrix are transformed by multiplication operations. This is an illustration representing a two-dimension case. When a square with the size of 1 is multiplied by a scale matrix, the width and height are changed. And when multiplied by a rotation matrix, the square rotates. C is Gaussian color, which is defined as a spherical harmony function. A corresponds to Gaussian transparency and is optimized as a single real value. 
Let's discuss the typical harmonic function in detail. It's simply written as SH in the paper. This is a function that expresses color in a spherical coordinate system. The angle in the X and Y planes is called polar angle. And the angle between the XY plane and the Z axis is called azimuthal angle. R is the radius. Here it's fixed to 1 and is not used. R is the radius, here it's fixed to 1 and is not used. The Y function which is defined differently depending on L and M uses camera poses as an input value. And it's defined by the formula on the right. L increases in integer units and L increases from minus L to plus L. From the values of L and M, various types of spherical coordinate functions are defined. The formula can be defined by solving Laplace rotation in the spherical coordinate system. The color texture map can be computed in various ways from the values of each spherical surface. In this example, you can see that the color map according to the angle changes are represented by matching the HSV color space. In the picture, you can see that as L increases, there are high frequency features. You can think of each sphere as a color palette. Therefore, this formula calculates the final color through weighted summation by giving a weight of k to each of the various types of palettes. You can see that the first sigma is summed for L and the second sigma is summed for M. The view direction is the input value. The output value is color and k, which is an optimized parameter from the ground to truth color, is updated. Next, let's look at the optimization section marked in blue. The sample training view is simply the part that receives the ground truth image and the view direction, which is the camera pose, as input. Let's rise. Renders a Gaussian model with mean, variance, color, and opacity into an image according to view direction, which is camera pose. In loss, the difference between the rendered image and the ground truth is calculated from L1 loss and DSSIM loss. In ADEM, the four variables that make a Gaussian are updated through the ADEM optimizer. It follows a simple machine learning process. Let's go into detail about rasterize, which is important in this paper. In the paper, it's called a tile-based rasterizer. It took keywords written in the pseudocode. First, in call Gaussian, it removes the Gaussian in a region out of the camera prostrum. To put it simply, it removes Gaussian that are outside the camera F4B. In screen space Gaussian, it projects the 3D Gaussian onto the 2D image plane at one distance away from the camera position. Here, the projection is converted from the world coordinate system to the camera coordinate system. And then from the camera coordinate system to the image coordinate system. Since the conversion from the camera coordinate system to image coordinate system is a non-linear transformation, Jacobian is used to change the form of a linear transformation in an infinitesimal area. It is defined as J. And it doubles the word to camera transformation, which is a linear transformation. In created tiles, it divides the screen into 60 by 60 pixel tiles. You can think of it as dividing it up for parallel processing. In duplicate with keys, it generates a key for each Gaussian for each tile. The reason it says duplicate is because if the Gaussian spans multiple tiles, it duplicates as many tiles as the Gaussian spans. The first 32 bits of the key are defined to the depth value based on the camera pose. 
and the last 30 bits of the key are defined to the tile number. In sorted by keys, it constructs a Gaussian list for each tile, and in get tile range, it leads the Gaussian list. These two parts make loading and sharing data efficient in parallel processing and allows the Gaussian list used that are going forward to be reused backward at high speed. In blend in order, if you perform Redis sorting using the key value created earlier, the tiles are sorted by depth, and the color and the alpha values are accumulated in order of closest depth from a given camera to create an image. And then, if the saturation of the pixel's alpha value exceeds a certain threshold, it will stop. This is the explanation of the tile-based rasterizer. Additionally, in the backward process, the gradients of loss are propagated according to the Gaussian opacity ratio. This is the part marked Adaptive Control of Gaussian in the overview. It's also called the densification process in the paper. This part is executed once every 100 iterations as marked each refined iteration. It removes the Gaussians when the alpha value is less than a certain threshold of 0 0.005. It's a process of urbanizing while reducing the number of Gaussians. From the next step, the number of Gaussian is increased. The gradient mentioned earlier is propagated to each Gaussian. If the size of gradient is greater than a position threshold 0 0.0002, it's considered that the Gaussian does not properly model the scene, and then the Gaussian is split or cloned. Here, there is a scale threshold. If the scale of Gaussian is larger than a certain scale threshold, the Gaussian is split, and if it's smaller, the Gaussian is cloned. In split Gaussian, one large Gaussian is divided to create two Gaussians to whose size is divided by 1.6 from the large Gaussian. Since the Gaussian itself is a probability distribution function, the two positions are The Gaussian is copied and positioned in the direction of the positional gradient. In the picture above, the black line is the shape of the virtual ground truth. If the modeled Gaussian is overly constructed, it's split into two. And conversely, if it's underly constructed, it's cloned. Lastly, an important concept is added that is not in the pseudocode. Every 3k iterations, the alpha values of all Gaussians are initialized to zero. If designed with remove, split, and clone, the number of Gaussians would continue to increase and would mediate the increase. From a quality perspective, filters are removed and duplicate Gaussians are removed. In existing LERP papers, areas close to the camera are observed a small number of times, result in plotters. You can think of these plotters as being removed through this process. The evaluation part has been explained in the previous introduction video, so I will only briefly mention it. Plan Oxel is the first model to create a radius field using spherical harmony without a neural network. I think it was mentioned because it used this uh, spherical harmonics as your base. Instant NGP is the best performer in terms of learning speed. MIMNERV 360 is the best performer in terms of quality. In Gaussian splatting, you can see that 
the quality is high, the learning speed is fast, and the rendering speed has increased significantly. Next is the oblation study. When initializing the initial Gaussian position, it experiments with initializing it to a random position rather than using SF FAM's point cloud. When initializing the random position, you can see that the background quality is not good. Surprisingly, you can see that the quality of the target items is high. Next experiments were conducted for cases where Gaussian split was not performed and when cloning was not performed. If splitting is not done, there is a lot of noise in the background and you can see that the scene is represented well in the area through many training images. When not cloned, the background is expressed better but the quality is not good in areas that cover many chain images. Additionally, it is said that convergence speed was slow if cloning was not performed. In cases where split and cloning are not possible, it seems that high-frequency features cannot be partially represented. Third, Referring to a study called FORSA in 2021, they checked whether ignoring the gradient after 10 points in front of the camera would improve speed while maintaining quality. As a result, it said that PSNL quality is declined. Fourth, Gaussian's covariance is optimized differently for the three axes x, y, and g. So it corresponds to any anisotropic covariance. By making the three axes have the same value, the anisotropic property was removed and it became isotropic. And the paper mentioned that it leads to a significant decline in quality. Uh, lastly, the limitation and solution of 3D Gaussian splatting. If you look at the rendered results, you can see that areas not given in the training data have artifacts in the form of long ovals or artifacts in the form of blobs. It said that artifacts occur when large sized Gaussians are created during the optimization process. No regularization term was used in optimization. When learning large scenes, more than 20 GB of GPU memory is required. In my experience, for small scenes, a 12 GB GPU is sufficient. It's said that the solution to the above problem is to introduce a principal counting method. It's said that you can use the visibility algorithm. It mentions suddenly switch in depth for any other. I don't exactly understand, but I guess as the word simple is used, I think it means not doing depth sorting and alpha blending sequentially, but rapidly switching depth sorting and alpha blending and doing them in parallel at the same time. It's said that artifacts can be removed by using the regularization technique. This concludes the paper review on 3D Gaussian splatting.